Good evening, good evening. Good evening, Elizabella. I see that you're listening while you're at work. Well, I hope you have a great night at work. Good evening, Tim McDowell. Thanks for joining us. Um, welcome, everyone, to uh, week two of the new series. Uh, the name of it is Bold Moves, Faith Outside Your Comfort Zone. And again, this is week two of the new series. And uh, tonight is titled uh, Courageous Trust. It will be covering Genesis 22, 1 through 14, and James 1, 2 through 3 and 13. Uh, I have uh, read over it some because there was some uh, extra scripture in some of the some of the questions tonight. So I made sure I went through and uh, got that scripture jotted down here, so I didn't have to look it up once we got started. But uh, anyway, we'll give just a few minutes here for everyone to come in. Uh, I know as far as prayer request. I think Cody's feeling a little under the weather tonight. So uh, as you all do uh, pray, pray for everything, just uh, ask God to heal him. Hello, Wayne Huska. How are you tonight, buddy? Glad to see you here with us. Thanks for joining us. Again, like I say, I'm going to give it just a couple minutes here. We can chit-chat a little bit here, and uh, then we'll get started. I want to give just a little time before I get started, let people filter in. Uh, looks like a few more is coming in. Tomorrow <clears throat> evening, 630, uh, that's 6.30 Central Standard Time. We've got a uh, premiere of uh, our latest fishing video. Yep. Hey, good evening, James Lambert, buddy. How are you doing tonight? Good to see you on here with us, buddy. Thanks for joining us. El Catfish Grande, good evening, good evening. Thanks for joining us. And fishing for whiskers. Hey, that's one of my favorite things to do, fish for whiskers. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and read the introduction for tonight. And again, it's uh, Courageous Trust is what it's entitled, or what it's titled, not entitled. Courageous Trust is what it's titled, and uh, it covers Genesis 22, 1 through 14, and James 1, 2, and 3, and 13. All right. It says, life happens regardless of our social, spiritual, or financial status. Life still happens. We are all grateful for the good seasons, when the job is secure, the family is healthy, and you're walking around humming a happy song. Then all of a sudden, life throws you a wrench. Someone you know gets sick. You lose your job. A friend or family member betrays you. The things you felt secure in all of a sudden feel like they're falling apart. Trust is never easy, especially when things become hard. Trusting Jesus as our Savior is the first step in becoming a Christian. But as we grow in our faith, our trust must also grow. You can't really know the fullness of God without trusting Him. Our story showcases a bold trust in a loving God as He puts Abraham to a test. He's about to ask him to give up something he's waited approximately 18 centuries for. God isn't testing him to be cruel or to see what he's made of. He already knows. He is testing him so that his trust will increase and their relationship can be de deepened. God tests us to make our trust bolder and stronger. Sometimes people struggle trying to discern if they are being tested by God or temp tempted by the enemy. It's important to understand the difference. Read James 1, 2 
2 through 3 and 13 aloud before reading our story. All right. So as I said, I've already wrote down the extra scriptures he put in here. Good evening, Dave Thomas. How are you tonight, buddy? Thanks for joining us. So James 1, 2 through 3 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And James 1, uh, James 1, 13 says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. All right. So there's our introduction into the night. And uh, I'll jump right in and read tonight's scripture. And tonight's scripture, again... I just went through James, uh, is uh, Genesis 22, 1 through 14. So bear with me, it's a little long, but I will make it through it here. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Take your son, he said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, go to the land of Morah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. So Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took with him two of his young men and his son Isaac. He split wood for a burnt offering and set out to go to the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there to worship. Then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. In his hand he took the fire and the knife, and the two of them <clears throat> walked on together. Then Isaac spoke to his father Abraham and said, my father. And he replied, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Then the two of them walked on together. When they arrived at the place that God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He replied, Here I am. Then he said, Do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your only son from, from me, Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. So today it is said it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. All right. So there's the scripture for tonight, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, that's a pretty strong faith. Uh, I could not ever imagine, could not ever imagine sacrificing one of my children. I just, it's, it's unimag uh, unimaginable. I just couldn't ever imagine it, and uh, I, I definitely pray that uh, God doesn't ever test my faith in that way because that that's that's uh that's a hard pill to swallow right there but uh, as i was reading this i i seen something i'm not sure exactly where it was um but I, isaac when he told the two young men that was with him he told them we will be back so that tells me that all along isaac had faith that God was going to provide uh, a different offering. So that was, that was pretty awesome. All 
Uh, if any of you guys have anything you would like to share about that, please do so. <clears throat> I don't know about you, Cody, but that was uh, that's pretty that's pretty strong faith. Yes, yes, it is. <clears throat> All right. So now I've read the story, wrote, read the introduction. Matt, thank you for joining us. Hey, Matt, what's up, buddy? I'm not sure how long. Going on? Sorry if I left you. I... For... No, that's okay. You're good. <clears throat> I definitely wasn't paying attention. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was up here just talking. Anyway, uh, I've read the story, read the introduction. I'll, I'll move right along and ask the first question. Uh, yes, Tim McDowell says uh, that has always been so hard. I could not even fathom it, and then that's it's it's so true, so true. Um, the first question is, what is a sacrifice you have made in your life? What was the outcome? And I, as I think about that question, what is a sacrifice I have made and what was the outcome? Well, to get to where I am now, and I thank God for where I am now and thank God for blessing me the way he has because he has blessed me way more than I ever deserved. That is for certain. But uh, I pretty much had to give up the, my whole lifestyle everything I was doing and uh, the people I was doing it with because where I was headed was not a good place. I was headed in the wrong direction and uh, I was rolling down the hill mighty fast and I was about to reach the bottom. And uh, God seemed fit to uh, pull me up out of that and uh, set me on the right path. And, uh, in doing so, now I get to live. I get to live doing the things I really enjoyed doing then, but I don't have all the bad stuff with it. Now I get to enjoy hunting and fishing, and I don't have to be drunk every time I do it. Uh, I don't have to be around stuff that I didn't ever want to be around anyway. Hanging out with a bunch of guys that that the drinking and partying was more important than the other stuff we were ever doing anyways. Uh, when I see those guys, I talk to them and, and uh, I wish them the best. I, I still consider, consider them my friends. I just don't hang out with them and do the wrong stuff with them anymore. So, I don't know if any of you guys have anything you would like to share there. Well, I can relate to what you just said. Just one moment, I'll be right back. I gotta go straighten some kids out. <laughs> you might want to sacrifice one of them. <laughs> but in the wrong way. <laughs> anyway, uh if no one has anything to add, I will move on to the next question. And it says, after reading the first few verses, how would you describe Abraham? What kind of man was he? Uh, number one, he was a faithful man. He was a man of God. That's for certain because uh, as some of us have already said, you know, being willing to sacrifice your own son because that's what God told you to do. That is, uh, man, that, that's... That's the ultimate faith to me. So uh, Abraham was definitely a man of God and, and was after God's own heart for sure. I don't he know. heeded everything that, that God would say and, and everything that he spoke about. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, again, I just don't, I, it's just, just like Tim uh, McDowell said, it's unfathomable to uh, think about 
sacrifice him one of your children. And uh, Abraham was willing to do so. But like I said, as I read that, I also noticed when I was reading it that, that Abraham took two young men with him and he told the two young men, we will be back. He didn't say he would be back. He didn't say I will be back. He said we would be back. So I think all along, I think Abraham had the faith in God that God was going to provide an offering and and it would not be his son. Yeah, he, yeah. I was going to say something, but I just forgot what I was going to say. It's pretty bad. I thought I was the only one. That's a lot. <laughs> I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I do that a lot. <laughs> well, good evening, Jody. Thanks for joining us. You're a backseat Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be that way. I'd always want to sit in the back. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be up where no one could see me. <laughs> and now I'm all over the place. People people always see me whether I want them to or not. All right. I'm going to move on to the third question then. And the third one says, imagine you are Abraham. What would be running through your mind after receiving this command from God? Verse 2. I'll go back and read verse 2. And verse 2 says, take your son, he said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, go to the land of Morah and offer him him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Jello, thank you for joining us. He said he's driving and listening. Good evening, Jello. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Have a safe uh, drive. Go ahead, Cody. I just said have a safe drive. Sorry. Yeah. I think uh, it would be hard no matter what you do, uh, or no matter how to, no matter how bad or good the relationship is between you and your child, whatever it is. To sacrifice one of them. I mean, I know a lot of people do it every day. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. And I mean, not in a good way, obviously. But, you know, back then, it's there wasn't so much strife between families as there is nowadays. Well, you know, no matter what any of my children ever have done, uh, I might have might wanted to beat them a little bit, but I never wanted to killed none of them or and I definitely never would have wanted to sacrifice them and uh, that's definitely a that's definitely a big test of faith for sure a big test of faith you know when I hear this Bible story I try I think it's really hard for a lot of people to relate to um, because it's it is it's like Tim Adow says he couldn't fathom it like you say, like Matt says, it's just out of the realm of anything that would ever be an option for you. But at the same time, Matt, he, he was a, Matt was in the military, you know. Okay. For most people, that would be unfathomable going into certain situations he, he had to deal with. But for him, he knew he, he had faith in himself that he was going to be okay. So it wasn't as scary. Mama getting on the boat. If, if, you for her, it's unfathomable to be going across the water at sixty mile an hour, but for you, it wouldn't bother you because you know you're going to be okay. In that situation, it was something that scared everybody else, but he had the faith to know that nothing bad was going to come from it. So it took a lot of that fear that we can't fathom out of it, because his faith was so strong. He knew he had nothing to fear. Right. Right. And, and I think you're exactly right. I think he had faith that above all that God was going to provide no matter what. Right. It wasn't that he was willing to say that, that he, I don't think, I think he went into it wholeheartedly believing that no matter the outcome, it was going to be for the best. Right. And because of that, he knew he was doing what was the best option. So there was no fear there for him. When you think about just the actions and you remove God from it, it's terrifying. But when you put the amount of faith Abraham had into it, I don't think he was scared at all. Right, right. And uh, Tim McDowell said, uh, number two, God doesn't speak directly to us either. 
Um, I think so. When I think about that, Tim, uh, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us and speaks to our speaks to our soul, speaks to our heart, um, which is part of the Trinity. It's uh, Father God, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Who so are they all, call it the unspeakable bond. Yes. Uh, God speaks to us, uh, you know, through the Holy Spirit and speaks to us when we read his word. And I think maybe there is times that, that people hear an audible voice of God talking to them. I'm here to tell you that's something else that would probably just scare me to death if that happened. Uh, cause I'd want to run and hide probably, but, uh, either way, uh, God speaks to us. It's just, uh, just not through an audible voice. No, you're exactly right. Not the way he spoke to Abraham and Moses. You're exactly right, Tim. And just like he said, uh, what was it? Uh, it was the angel, angel of the Lord spoke spoke to him from heaven. Uh, I couldn't ever imagine looking up and the sky opening up and the angel speaking to me. Again, it would probably scare me to death. Well, Jesus had multiple roles on this earth. One was to be the road model for what, what can be achieved. Two is to, to give his life so that we can be forgiven. And three is he is that mediator between us and God. Yes. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be able to have the same relationship we have today with our father. No, he, he, he was, he filled that gap. He, he's that bridge between us and God. Yes. All right. The next question says, how does verse five show us the strength of Abraham's faith? Do you have an experience where your faith was greater than the predictable outcome? And I'll read verse five. Let's see here. Okay, it says, verse five says, then Abraham said to his, to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there to worship. Then we'll... Come back to you. Yeah, that's just what I was talking about earlier. There, right there, shows that all along Abraham knew that God was going to provide a way because he said, we'll be back back to you. <clears throat> um, let's see. Do I have, do do any of you have an experience where your faith was greater than the predictable outcome? Uh, I think I shared with you guys one night. Uh, uh, my grandmother, well, she has passed away now, but I uh, remember at one point that uh, she was in Vanderbilt Hospital, and uh, she was having to have surgery her kidneys were shutting down and stuff. And, uh, I remember I had prayed for God to heal her and, uh, or just use the doctors to heal her or whatever, whatever way he wanted to heal her. And, uh, I remember, I remember having a calm come over me and I felt like God was telling me, uh, that, that he was going to heal her. And at that time he did heal her. Uh, what what was wrong with her at that time? She got over, she was healed from it, and she got to come home. Uh, she lived, uh, and that was that was a few years before before her death. I don't know if you guys have anything you would like to share. And the question is, uh, what is an example of a time that you had a more had faith that? Um, the outcome would be something different than what's predictable. Yes, that, that you have an experience where your faith was greater than the predictable outcome. I've had a few of those. I'm sure you have. Uh, just like Actually, Cody. more than a few, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, like Cody was talking earlier, you know, and the first thing I thought in my mind, you know, uh, you uh, going into the service, you know, you're anyone that goes into the service, they're 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 laying down 
their life for all of us. Uh, they're putting everyone else's life in this country before their own life. Well, if it let me bring it up, it keeps. Uh... Also, there, you know, when uh, they say uh, you'll never catch anything on a full moon or you'll never, you know, you'll never see a deer when the moon, you know, the night before or after a full moon or whatever, you know, but you go out there and you harvest the biggest deer, the catch the biggest fish you caught. And it's just like, you know, <laughs> yes. And, and I've had that happen. Yeah. All right. Tim says, uh, mine was persistence in my marriage against very bad odds. And Tim, uh, as I've shared with you guys before, and, uh, that's probably one of the worst things I've ever went through is, uh, uh, my wife and I being separated for quite a long time, and it was a very bad situation. But the whole time, I was in the Word, and God, I felt like God was telling me the whole time He was going to restore it all. And uh, I'll be honest, it went on long enough that I finally gave up. Even though I, for a long time I carried that faith, I carried that faith, and I would finally said, well, it's just going to be what it is, and I'm just going to move on. And at that point, God restored it and uh, done just done everything just what he said he was going to do. As a matter of fact, I think he made it better than ever. And Mike Greenwell's joining us. He said, good evening, driving and listening. Good I know evening, Mike. Mike out on the water, so hopefully he had a great trip out after work today. Uh, for me, I guess mine would have to be, there was, I mean, I guess it's, it doesn't even seem like it was that long ago going on, uh, I think four years now. Uh, there was a time where all I cared about almost to the point where I didn't even care about my family is I'd got to the point where all I wanted to do was, you know, I guess call it party or, you know, do different substances, drink and, and, and only worry about that. And, uh, you know, it got to the point where I was going to lose my wife and kids over it. And uh, I had faith that I could be delivered from it. And here I am today. It, it It's almost like it was never an issue. Uh, it's really odd. Um, you know, at the same time, I see other people struggle and I can relate. But then at the same time, I'm like, just stop. And it, it should, you know, and I know from experience, it's not that easy, but then at the same time, if you put your faith and prayers into it, it is that easy, or at least it was for me, you know, and that was, that's not the expected outcome, but that was the outcome for me. And, and that's awesome. And uh, that's the thing without faith, I wouldn't be where I am today either. And uh, it's having that faith in God and just laying it down and giving it to God and God taking care of it because without, without God taking care of it, I don't, I, I wouldn't be here either right now today. And Tim, that's, uh, there you go. Just like you said, uh, he, he kept saying, wait and see. And uh, that's just it. Sometimes we just have to have faith. Uh, we, we can't look at what we see with our eyes. We have to uh, know what God's telling us and just, just, know that what he's telling us is going to happen. Just having a great faith. That's it. All right. The next one says, read verse 7, 8, 7 and 8. What does it say to you? How is this a picture of the promise of Jesus? So verse 7 and 8 says, Then Isaac, Spoke to, spoke to his father Abraham and said, My father. And he replied, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Then the two of them walked on together. So it says... What does this say to you? How is this a picture of the promise of Jesus? Well, God said uh, he was going to send a Savior. He said he was going to send us uh, uh, an, uh, 
someone to save us all. And uh, that's just what he did. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And uh, J Jesus was the great sacrifice for all of our sin. I don't know if anyone else has anything to add. But just like uh, Cody was saying earlier, you know, Jesus filled that gap between us and God. Uh, we didn't even have a way to the Father before Jesus. Uh, but Jesus came and, uh, of course, sacrificed his life went through more torture than any of us probably could ever fathom again and uh, died on a cross and three days later, rose from the grave, and he is the Savior of us all through his sacrifice. Right. All right. We'll move on to the next one, and it says... Imagine the fear running through Abraham's heart in verse 10. Describe a time in your life when God showed up just at the right time. And so verse 10 says, Then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. I, I... I don't know. I'm torn on that question because I don't know that he was as fearful as what you may think. I think his faith was wasn't allowing him to be f fearful because he be he believed it wasn't it wasn't going to come to fruition that that God was going to deliver him from that situation. Um, and then I, I guess the question was a time when God reached out and protected you or delivered you from a situation. Is that the question? Yes. Um, well, all right, a time I can think of is uh, I worked at a printing factory the next town over, and uh, we printed with a toluene base ink, which is the same chemical that's in spray paint. It's very flammable. And uh, we had a printing press actually blow up with me in it. And I was burnt uh, very severely. Um, my, my face uh, and then my right arm. And I was convinced I was going to look like Freddy Krueger. And they were, and they, uh, the hospital was astounded that, you know, they weren't so much worried about the burns that were on my face and arm. They were worried about my lungs because, uh, the explosion actually knocked me back, made me hit my head pretty good, split my head in the back and stuff. And, uh, you know, whenever you get hit in the chest from an explosion like that, your first instinct is to gasp. Well, the air is what was on fire because of all the fumes and they were, they were, their big thing was, Oh, your esophagus, your lungs are going to be burnt. We can't, that's the real problem. We can fix the burns on your arm, your face, whatnot. And, uh, I had zero burns anywhere other than just my skin. And even then I thought I was going to look like Freddy Krueger and, uh, looked awful, looked awful, looked awful, come home. And then like the day after coming home is like, I, I wiped it off and skin was there. Went from being no skin there to there was just skin. Unwrapped my arm, skin was there. And uh, it was, you know, it was amazing. I mean, I, the situation was rough. I think I spent 14 days in the burn unit at Vanderbilt. Uh, but it it was so much better than what it could have been. Yes. That was yeah. a pretty pretty scary moment for, uh, for me, me and Amy also. And the whole time they were saying he was going to have to have skin grafts and everything and end up not having none and and healed completely. Probably yeah. did you better because you were probably hideous back then. Oh, man. I, believe it or not, I, I, I turned down several modeling jobs back in those days. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish oh, I that hurt. Turn <laughs> Well, I was just thinking the whole time, you know, uh, Freddy Krueger would probably look a little better. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it was uh, it was a trying time, and uh, 
and yeah, definitely uh, God definitely blessed him and healed him for sure. The worst part about the whole experience, not to get too far off topic, and we'll go back to what it was, was believe it or not, not me being hurt because after after a few days, I mean, even after a day, I knew that I was going to be all right. But watching the young children that were also in the burn unit, they had lost limbs and fires from their parents doing different stuff and 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 the house being blown up and they they them being run up down the hall trying to learn how to play with a basketball with their left hand because they have no right hand anymore and they're being they're in such a better mood than I was at the time that was the hardest part of it all I mean it was just it was rough to see you know different situations humbles us and uh, brings to light our true life blessings uh, in, in uh, many different ways. All right. Uh, Mike Greenwell says, I was drunk driving, wrecked into a light pole, and fire hydrant, and a fire hydrant. My head went through the windshield, and I had brain damage, but I healed. I believe, I believe God let me live. Um, Mike, that's, that's <coughs> awesome, and, uh, you know, I, I've told people this many times. Even at my worst, when I was out doing nothing that I ever should have been doing, God spared me. He saved me many times. There were many times in my life I should have never made it home. I should have been somewhere in a ditch dead. But God chose to protect me. And... Later on, after coming to know God and to know Jesus, I know now that God had a purpose for my life. Uh, I just hope I can fulfill that purpose and uh, do everything that he wants me to do. Because right now in my life, that's all, that's all I want is God's will to be done in my life. But he saved me many times when I definitely didn't deserve it. All right. And the next, <clears throat> the next one says, uh, read Genesis twenty two thirteen, John nineteen two, and John eight fifty six. In that order, these instances are hundreds of years apart. What is the correlation? How's this evidence that God's word is infallible? So let me read those. Genesis 22, 13 says, Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in the place of his son. John 19, 2 says, and the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put on him, put on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. And then John 8.56 says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. So, Go back to the question. It says, these instances are hundreds of years apart. What is the correlation? How is this evidence that God's word is infallible? Uh, I think in all instances, God provided a sacrifice for us, for them. Uh, in Genesis twenty-two thirteen, 13, God provided a ram for the sacrifice. It wasn't going to be as it wasn't going to be Isaac, Abraham's son. He he provided a ram for the sacrifice. Gave his gave his son's life back. In John 19, 2, the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. Well, we know the rest of that story. They'd already beaten him. 
then they put the crown on him, the purple robe, and they made him pack his own cross up the hill that they crucified him on. That was Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice, the sacrifice for each and every one of us in our sins. Hey, Larry, I got to jump off here. All right. All right. Thank you, Matt. Matt. You have good night, buddy. Right. Up here with us, man. Good night, guys. Good night. Um, and John 8, 50, 8 56 says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. I think, just as we talked about earlier, I think all along Abraham saw the big, the whole picture. He knew that God was going to provide a sacrifice. He knew he wasn't going to have to sacrifice his son. Uh, Abraham knew that there was going to be a Messiah. He saw that day. He saw that, that God was going to provide a way for all of us, a way out for all of us. Uh, so I think that's that's the relationship between all of them. You have anything you would like to add, Cody? Well, I think you covered it all. Um, yeah, I mean, the correlation is, is God never puts you in a situation that you can't handle and that will not work out. You know, he, he promised us that if we have faith in him, that everything's going to be okay. And that doesn't mean that everything's going to be exactly as you might have envisioned it. But at the end, at the end of your life, you'll still you won't you won't perish. You'll have everlasting life, and he's never made a promise that he didn't keep. And I think those are all examples of him just keeping those promises and um, faith being rewarded. All right. That's exactly right. Well, the last one says, "What test are you going through right now, and how can we pray for you?" So please. If any of you are going through anything right now, anything at all, if any of you need prayer for anything, please let us know. I know, uh, is it, I forget, Cody, is it, how you say, is Stan, it's, uh, his channel is. Sasqu Sasquahanna Stan. Sasquahanna, yes, Hannah Stan. I know, guys, that uh, he had his surgery last week uh, for the cancer and he is still battling the cancer and he could use all of our prayers. Um, I think there is some go, there's a GoFundMe page out there for him um, and ways to donate find to it. him. That'd so if awesome. any of you find it in your heart that you would like to do that, please do so. I know Brian B, uh, Brian sure, B shared it out. Uh, but I just would like to ask all of you to continue to pray for Stan. Um, I know last week, which uh, Matt's gone now, but uh, he said, and he said it in the past, that uh, Toby, his wife, uh, was having pain. She has some nerve damage. She had, and, a huh? she had her surgery, yeah. Okay. And so please lift her up in your prayers as well. Um, I know Chrissy Brown, she's been uh, battling sickness for quite a while with her lungs and different situations. I think she's doing better now. We give all praise to God for that, but uh, just continue to pray for her and her health. Right. You know, and her goal is ultimately to be able to get off of the tank. And um, it, right now it's just not working out for her. So we'll continue to pray that not only she'll get to feeling better, but she'll be able to reach her goal of getting off the oxygen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne Huska. You're just, your generosity is just great. It's just, I don't know what to say. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. You had a loss for words. Yes. And again, and then that's another one, Wayne. I know Wayne's doing better now. Uh, give all praise to God for that. But uh, Wayne's been battling a lot of health issues as well. 
and uh, please continue to pray for him. Uh, again, I think Cody's feeling pretty under the weather tonight. I think he feels like he may have strep throat or something. So pray for him or I'm not going to let him get in my boat Saturday. I'll be fine. Uh, I went out fishing with you and you had COVID. Hush up. <laughs> Uh, my son tested positive for strep, and then I'm I feel sick today. I'm a lot of drainage and a little feverish, but uh, so I'm just guessing that B, he stays up in my face all the time, you know, wallering on me. That it's probably the same thing, but either way, it's nothing too serious, and uh, I'll be fine. Yes, hopefully I feel feel good by Saturday, but either way, I'm going fishing. But anyway, any of you have any prayer requests, please just uh, just put them in the chats. Uh, if you ever have a prayer request, again, I'll, it goes without saying this is any at any time, any time in the week. Uh, any guys have any prayers, ever just need to talk, you can uh, send me a message on uh, Messenger at 3 Plus 1 Outdoors, or you can send me an email at uh, 3 Plus 1 Outdoors at gmail.com. I would I would probably read it faster if it's on Messenger, just because I will get a notification on here. Uh, I should get a notification even with the email though, so uh, either way is fine. Uh, but uh, I, I I will always say and I always will believe that probably one of the most important things we can ever do for one another is to pray for one another. And, um, well, that pretty much wraps up the Bible study po uh, portion of the live stream. Um, I dropped the link to StreamYard in the chat. If anybody wants to come up and share what's going on with uh, any of their fishing or outdoor, excuse me, had a hiccup, uh, fishing or outdoor adventures, um, and, uh, or you can share them in the chat. Uh, normally, we just spend the last portion of the hour uh, fellowshipping and talking about whatever. Uh, normally, outdoors, just because this is an outdoors channel. Uh, so, but there's that. If anybody wants to come up, they got any announcements they want to share. Uh, Mike Greenwell, I know, I seen he said he was catching fish. Uh, I think he was in Lee Evans chat. I couldn't chat in it because he blocked me. Uh, <laughs> What'd you do to make him mad? He blocked me this morning. I was aggravating him. I don't, and uh, I had changed my username. He didn't even know it was me, and I was in there trolling him. But uh, I'll have to message him tomorrow morning and tell him, hey, unblock me because nobody can see what I type in chat. <laughs> But yes, uh, yeah, and I, that's another thing. Uh, the last two weeks, uh, Matt uh, came up with us. And if any of you guys uh, ever be willing to uh, come up on a Wednesday night and be on the panel with us and talk with us, uh, just let me know that you're willing to do that or you would like to do that. And uh, we will send you the link and get you up here because I uh, really enjoy having someone else up here to talk with and uh and to go through this with. And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm really enjoying this. I love doing it. I love just uh, being able to spend time with everyone and uh, spend time talking about the word. And, and uh, I, it helps me. I mean, I hope it helps some of you guys. Uh, like I said, I really felt like God called me to do this, and that's the reason I'm doing it. But uh, as Cody said, we want to talk about things are going on right now uh one of the things is this weekend's the last weekend of turkey season here in kentucky and i haven't killed a turkey uh don't know that i will be honest because i'll probably go saturday morning and that'd probably be it uh i got something i gotta do late in the morning saturday morning so i'm not when i do go saturday morning i'm not going to be able to hunt long and i'm gonna be honest I just about just rather just soon be out fishing anyway. Well, I tried to drop the link to tomorrow's premiere, but it didn't. I don't know if it worked. Uh, it's not showing up as a link on here, but 
<clears throat> came in here showing me his drawings. Yeah, tomorrow night at 6 30, uh, we will be pr premiering our uh, latest video, which was uh, this last weekend, uh, this last Saturday evening's fishing trip for Cody and I. Uh, we have some other footage that I need to get edited, just I hadn't had time to sit down and and go through it all and edit it. But uh, we have a bunch of uh, crappie fishing from Alabama that I need to get through and a little bit of cat fishing while we were there. I think it all makes for a pretty good video. Well, um, Daddy, uh, that's about all I've got to add. Um, chat's not really moving right now, so uh, we could – we could wrap it up if you want to wrap it up just a few minutes early and uh, we've, you know, completed Bible study and so nobody has to listen to us just say the same. Oh, well, we got a comment coming in. Right. You, you must be able to see it before I can. There it is. It pops up on the TV before it does my phone. <laughs> All right. Tim O'Dow says, uh, I want you to know how much this means to me and as a fellow human center, how proud I am for for you for following through with the tasks that seem so tough. Hey, same here, Tim. Same here for you, buddy. Uh, it's just when you when I sit back and I think about how things were, where things were, and where I am now, and the things God has done, it's pretty unbelievable. It's pretty amazing. Uh, we, we definitely serve a amazing God. That's for sure. Thank you, Tim, for always coming in and being a part of yes. this. Um, it, believe it or not, it makes it so much easier on us when we've got something to read and interact with and uh, makes a huge difference. So thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, Tim, you're one of the guys that I always look forward to being in and chatting with us. Uh, you, uh, Wayne, and there's a few more that are always in there chatting and uh, always have some good input put, and I always look forward to it. Uh, but anyway. CBA, thanks for uh, dropping in. Uh, we oh, were CBA. just wrapping everything up. But I did see a picture of a uh, CBA got on him a catfish the other day. And uh, I know a lot of the waters where he fishes in California doesn't have an abundance of them. And what they do have is only channel cats. But uh, he managed to uh, hook up on one. So congratulations to him. Yes. Yeah. And as a, that's. <laughs> Uh, that's something else is <laughs> unimaginable, not being able to fish for catfish, of course. You know, I fished for catfish all my life. <laughs> and, uh, not being able to fish for them, that would be rough. Or, you or, know, ha having waters that had very few in it. Or um, not being able to fish for blue cats, because that's what we right. are arguing. Yes, yes. Love fishing the blue cat for the blue cats. Uh, love that takedown the blue cats give you. Uh, unfortunately, here on our home lake, the, the thing that's hurting and suffering the most on our home lake now is uh, flatheads. Thank you, Wayne. And, and uh, Wayne, just like I said, you're another one. I always look forward to seeing in here on Wednesday night. Actually, I think every video or anything we do, uh, I look forward to seeing your comments and, uh, and what you have to say. Uh, you're definitely a great supporter, and uh, we thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, the flatheads are what really, really went downhill and suffering the most in our home lake. There is still a few flatheads in there, but they're nothing nothing like what it used to be. It used to be a great flathead fishery, but it isn't anymore. The blues are king there now. Good evening, Mad Catter. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Well, again, before we wrap this up, I just want to say if anybody has any prayer requests, uh, yes. we're about to pray things out for the night. Um, so if anybody has any prayer requests, drop them in the chat. If you don't want to drop them in the chat, you can email them to us or you can message us on Facebook Messenger. 
It's three plus one outdoors at both. Um, three plus one outdoors at gmail.com is the email. So uh, and they can be as, as vague or specific as you want. We'll pray for them, pray for exactly what you tell us to, as well as staff at church will also be praying for it. Um, so, Most definitely. Most definitely. Dick, you don't want to be in my face. All right. If you guys don't care, we'll I'll pray us out. Uh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this this great, great blessing of just being able to come on here, Lord, and uh, share your word, spend time with fellow believers, Lord, and uh, just to get to grow together and to get to fellowship, Father. Uh, Lord, I want to pray over Stan and the cancer, Toby and her nerve damage, Chrissy Brown and her lung problems, Wayne and his health. Lord, not only those, Lord, I lift up each and every other person that's here with us tonight, Lord, and then those that aren't with us tonight, Lord. Uh, Lord, you know every situation, you know every heart. Lord, I just ask you to fill every heart with love and joy, Lord, and uh, I just ask you to be the guiding light beneath our feet. I ask you to put a hedge of safety around each and every one of us as we go through our days, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, guys, uh, Mad Catter, have a uh, safe trip to Mendota. I hope you hook into a 30 pound channel up there. Uh, thank yes. you, to everybody that joined in. Um, Miss Chrissy was at church, so she just got here for time for prayer. Ms. Good Chrissy, evening, Chrissy. That is awesome that you felt up to go into Wednesday night service. So we're excited about that, Praise Lord. But we will continue to uh, pray for you and, um, just again, thank you all. Tomorrow night, 6.30 Central Standard Time, we've got a premiere of uh, our latest fishing trip. So join us for that. As we always say, it's God, family, and the great outdoors. God bless you guys, and thanks for joining us.